peace never lasts forever. Well, not in the Star Wars universe, at least. That's right. We're diving headfirst into the sandy wasteland of Tatooine and the bustling cityscape of Coruscant in Attack of the Clones. Get ready, because this episode is full of forbidden love, creepy clones, and a whole lot of Anakin thirsting. Welcome to the No More Late Feast podcast. I'm Jackie. And I'm Danielle, and we're just two best friends and ex-Blockbuster employees re-watching some of the best and worst movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. This week, we are talking about the 2002 film Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones in celebration of Star Wars Day. May the fourth be with you. <laughs> but before we dive in, let's get into some housekeeping. If you love the podcast and you want to support us, here's a few ways that you can. Leave us a review, please. And any platform, wherever you listen to us, five stars. Thank you. <laughs> and don't forget to hit subscribe to our show when you're on your favorite podcast platform, because then it alerts you when new episodes are live. And the party's over at Patreon. Seriously, you need to hop on over there, become a Patreon bestie, check out our exclusive content. We have behind the scenes, we have bonus footage, all of the stuff that hit the cutting room floor, patreon.com slash no more late fees. But we are not alone. Joining us this week is returning guest and Anakin Skywalker apologist, Maria. <laughs> Can't think in my heart. Right? You know what? It's my FO. Let me just own it. Yes. <laughs> we did nothing wrong. This is like preserve fascism in the sky world. But yeah. But hi, got to be back. <laughs> so happy to have you back. Always mm -hmm. a pleasure when uh, you join us. And we laugh so hard when you're with us. I <laughs> always have so much fun here. <laughs> happy we can talk about everything together. If you want to get to know Mario a little better, come back later this week as we discuss our love for hot villains. The tea is piping hot, y'all. <laughs> on our bonus episode but you can also check out our other episodes with maria bend it like beckham and holes third time's the charm for attack of the clone <laughs> it's about time we like it's about time whenever you guys mentioned like oh we're gonna discuss this like movie i was like yes <laughs> all of our... <laughs> yeah this is well, my let... like jam <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's let's get into your jam. Uh, I'm going to give a brief synopsis if you've been living under a rock about <laughs> episode two. Mm -hmm. Set 10 years after the events of The Phantom Menace, the Republic continues to be mired in strife and chaos. A separatist movement encompassing hundreds of planets and powerful corporate alliances poses new threats to the galaxy that even the Jedi cannot stem. I'm going to be honest with you. I think this is the first time I've heard like what the movie is about. <laughs> None of this sounds familiar either. I was talking to Jackie. I'm like, I don't think I, I've watched this movie so many times. I don't think I could explain what it's about. So, can't, can't, it's about. even after reading this, I won't be able to explain it. <laughs> These moves long planned by an as yet unrevealed and powerful force lead to the beginning of the Clone Wars and the beginning of the end of the Republic. Dun, dun, dun. Can, can, wait can i just say though like the synopsis when i was watching the movie is that how me and anakin fall in love and that's it <laughs> 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 that's like what, think what disney plus had on there so like how me and anakin secretly fall in love and i'm like so much more happens in this movie but okay go on, disney. <laughs> It, that's the least of our worries in this movie yeah. sand there's a little bit of sand there's a lot of love there's a lot of killing and and robots robots the outfits, the outfits are great though yes. fits are Darling. hitting oh. chef's well, kiss well the movie stars ewan mcgregor natalie portman hayden christensen ian mcdermott samuel l jackson christopher lee tamira morrison Anthony Daniels, Kenny Baker, and Frank Oz. The movie, of course, was directed by George Lucas. The screenplay was written by George Lucas and Jonathan Hales. You can watch it currently on Disney+. Plus. But before we start, let's get into our ratings rewind. So you know the drill. 
Before we get into the movie, we'll reveal the rating our Y2K versions of ourselves we give. And then at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating. Our scale consists of would buy it, would buy it again. The best would play on repeat. Five day rental. Would watch again. Two day rental. Eh, okay, but nothing to write home about. Insane day rental. Put them in a sand dune and swallow them up in the universe. It's <laughs> fucking trash. Yeah. I'm in I was a Silac any- pit. <laughs> yeah. It's like we watched it once, that's enough. Oh. <laughs> so, Maria. Maria. Uh, of- same day we- rental? <laughs> <laughs> like, why would you rewatch this movie? Sorry. <laughs> okay, I want to assume that my childhood self, because I, I remember we I rewatched the movie with the ratings in mind, and I'm like, maybe as a child with Hayden, with the fact that like, oh, it's so cool with like the special effects, I, I, I would have liked it. I mean, I would have done a two day rental at the top. Like, I'm assuming I would have done a two day rental at that time. Okay, okay. at that time. At that time, <laughs> <To be clear. laughs> at that time. Yeah. I, lo- I love yeah. that you're like when you were a child and I was like I saw this in college and <laughs> I was in high school so like, I was like 15 in high school and like enamored by the man so <laughs> I saw this in college and I remember being super psyched for it like I hadn't given up hope I <laughs> saw the first sequel phantom menace was not happy with it but i said you know what george is gonna come through he's not gonna disappoint your girl a second time around he's just not it's not gonna happen and i remember i had a group of friends we went and stood in line this was gonna be it and you know the smartest thing they did was put that yoda seat uh, fight scene at the end closer mm-hmm. to the end of the movie because True. i do remember that being like, yo, this movie was shit, but that scene though, <laughs> Yoda was that was top tier. So yeah. my rating at the time was definitely two day rental because I was like, I'm still gonna go back and rewatch it because I would not let my love for Star Wars die. Yeah. It that and now. the fact that they cast hot people. You know, really I I was not interested in and in, in not one of the cast members. Okay, fair, 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 fair. I, I that was if Harrison Ford was not in these movies, I did not. Oh, um, valid. <laughs> Harrison Ford is just yeah. You cannot touch on Harrison tier. Ford. Yeah, like Danielle, burn me once, George. <laughs> not again. So I did not see this in the Y two K. I waited what? until I was a full grown adult to try and watch this i did have to call ken at one point and i'm like i need you to explain this movie to me I'm because... impossible. <laughs> so the first time i ever watched it as a grown-up was probably a year ago maybe two years ago because i'm like i'm gonna watch all of them in machete order as i'm watching i'm like hold on wait a minute clones they talk about are human or like humanoid they're not the robots and he's like no why would they be the robots i'm like that's all you saw in the trailers for 25 years i thought the clones are the robots the droids that come out and attack everyone i'm like so the clones are in this movie for like less than two minutes and they get top billing i don't understand and he was just like looking at me you know when Jessica Simpson is like, is this tuna or is this chicken? The way Nick Lachey looked at her is the way Ken was looking at me about not understanding that the robots were not the clones. <laughs> no, no. So, and I want to, I want to be clear. It's so valid because, so though I like loved Hayden Christensen growing up and I knew very much about that, like Star Wars lore, I didn't actually watch any of these movies until three years ago where mm. I like sat out. And I remember this was the movie that was like my rate limiting step like i was just like stopped and i'm like i don't understand this one guys and like so many people like stitched me and like were like trying to explain it to me and talking to me the movie does not make sense (laughs) simply put the clones this whole time were good they were clones yeah what they were (laughs) no it's so valid it's so valid so I did record my conversation with Ken. It's like three minutes long, but he does a really good job as, as of explaining. So I can play that for us. So 
And he's at the track, so there might be loud noises. But is there something? Is he still there? You know how I was confused, and I thought the clones were the droids, but they're not. A couple years ago, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So where did the droids come from? The droid army? Yes. Should they just the have them? The Geonosians built them? So the bug people? Okay. They were commissioned by someone different than the guy that died? So the Separatists in the episode one, where the Jedi Knights go to the trade Viceroy in the very beginning when they, you know, basically start the war with, uh, you know, the Viceroy guy, I forget his name. Anyway, that's what we know in episode four is the rebel, the separatist, Separatists from the Senate. Okay. So the Geonosians are the bug people that fly around. Not to be confused with Watto. the guy who had Anakin, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so the Geonosians are building the droids because they need an army if they're going to separate from the Republic. Got right? it. So the Republic turns into the Empire, and the Separatists turn into the Rebel Alliance. Okay. Right? So it, it's like the roles are reversed in the first three movies, which okay. is probably where you're getting confused. Is the first three movies... The bad guys are the good guys in four, five, and six. Okay, but right. the, but okay, yes, and that's why the droids are attacking so the, Anakin the and Obi Wan. Yeah, so the Trade Federation is, is who's building the droids. It's just the Genosians are building them for the droids, and they're right. in the. So the droids are just easily cheap made things, so okay. they don't have to. And then when they find out the clone army was ordered by, I think it's Count Dooku actually ordered them, but you know they they painted out another Jedi. That he's died. been dead for a long time. Yeah. 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 So he didn't have anything to do with it. But that was the, the you know, who they had in the books. Really. He was the patsy. Um, <laughs> yes, but he was murdered. So anyway, so you're asking about the droids, where they came from. The Separatists built them in order to, you know, basically do the blockade of Naboo. Okay. And then start, you know, they ramped up production of the droids. You know, they, R2 and C3B are like running through the factory. Yeah. And trying to get stamped out and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's because... Uh, you know, they're just building the droids as fast as they can. So it goes on from there. But that's essentially in a nutshell. You know what got me? (laughs) Tell me. Was when I was watching the newer three movies and the fanboys were mad about Finn being a black man. Thank you. And so then... I was reading the discussions beside like what exact what's what's so bad? Why are you so mad? And they were talking about how the stormtroopers were supposed to be clones. The clones. And then I said, say well now, clones. Yes. Oh and God. so that that's that little pebble stayed in my brain because then somebody was going, Well, that changed after so and so, and then people started to sign up. Yes. To be the stormtrooper. So I was like, okay, okay. Now, exactly. rewatching it back, I'm like, oh shit, these are the clones that the fanboys were talking about. Yes. And, and that's it started. Like, and that's like so freaking confusing. I low key think Attack of the Clones kind of made it worse. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I was bringing it for that reason. <laughs> that <laughs> like, because like I like the idea that people just like were like, yeah, we agree with this because we see this in our like, modern culture of people being like yeah that shows a low-key cool so like yeah you know i could see people signing up for it or like being recruited into it because they had no choice right like it probably was right. until he was just like wait i have a choice let me help people right so like whenever this clone thing happened that's why i was so confused and i'm like wait they were clones for a bounty hunter what? Yeah. so i did ask ken about that because he's like yeah that's what the clones but they accelerated their aging process to grow them quicker yeah and so they died off quicker and so in so uh in solo han was going to sign up to be a stormtrooper and then Mm -hmm. didn't and i don't like solo very much i refuse to see it that that did happen but like you know donald glover's in it so like i watched it obviously and so it was amelia clark but yeah yeah well and and ken has very hard opinions about most things, but solo, he's like, if they had just called it a Star Wars story and it wasn't Han Solo and uh, the main character, mm-hmm. he's like, it was a great movie. It was yeah. just not Han Solo's story. Like, I refuse to believe it's Han Solo's story. And I think that's why everyone has a hard time with it because I'm not a Han Solo girly, even though I love Harrison Ford. I love Harrison Ford. 
don't look at me like that video. I love that man. I we love all him. have our favorite <laughs> he, Star Wars my, characters. He Less my, competition. That's fine. <laughs> he's a, he, for me, Harrison Ford is peak in Indiana Jones, personally. I do love a rip shirt. <laughs> but the button down, like Professor vibe. Yeah. So, mm, like, 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 anyways. Okay. <laughs> but like, yeah, no, I'm not a Han. I, I guess like I expect it too much. But yeah, no, Solo just didn't do it for me as much. I love, I love the casting. It was great. Yeah. It's just, yeah. But like Rogue, I, maybe I compared it to Rogue One too much. Maybe Rogue that's One why. is one of, is yeah. one of my favorite outside of the, yes. the original It's a three. good movie. I think it that's is. what the thing is. It's just a great movie and then it happens to be Star Wars. Yeah. They need yeah. to do more of that. I think Mandalorian yeah. is in line with that as well. Yeah. yeah. That's why I love Mandalorian so much. Like, it's just... Like, I loved Obi-Wan, but I like Obi-Wan in a sense that it's a Star Wars right. project. But I like Mandalorian in the sense that I love the show of Mandalorian. Yeah. So it's different. Yeah. And Attack of the Clones is very much like, oh, I watched it because it was in the Star Wars universe. Yes. Right. <laughs> I don't know if Carrie Fisher helped with ghostwriting on this one at all we learned that she was a ghostwriter for a lot of different movies and in the original star wars movies george would ask her to kind of fix a few things she is a, called a script doctor for a reason she's one of the she was one of the best and i really feel like this movie needed a woman's touch a hundred percent like watching 100%. The Anakin Padme scenes made me want to pull my hair out because I'm like, who talks like this? Who talks to each other like this? What woman does this? And that's where I was like, okay, there's no female perspective in this whatsoever. And Hayden Christensen does play the. Everyone's like, it's really bad acting. But I have to say, you have some of the best actors you could have in this movie, honestly. And it was the direction. It was the script. It's because the dialogue. It's the it's dialogue. Because Natalie Portman is a great actress. Hayden Christensen, I've seen him do some pretty good stuff. You Life know? is a house. Like, yeah. he was great in that. And like, I know I'm a Hayden girly, but I'm like, <laughs> he did what he had to do with like the cadence of like Darth Vader. Like right. he was definitely like channeling his James Earl Jones. Like he was trying to do that cadence. It's right. the dialogue. Who yeah. talks about Sam when they're flirting? Yes. right it it's like I, I i i know that george lucas has been with a woman <laughs> but <laughs> after watching this movie i'm like but has he has he so, been with a woman before that one is hard <laughs> i <laughs> i i was ranting about this movie to ken and i was just like it makes no sense there's no reason for Padme to fall in love with Anakin. Makes again makes no sense. He's got no right. game. And no. Ken goes, "Well, there is a fan theory that Anakin was using the Force on her the whole time." Oh, okay. Well, I hate that. <laughs> Bring that up. But this is the one little fun fact. I actually didn't know this fun fact. But I looked it up for this. So the aggressive negotiation conversation between Anakin. And Padme, which I will say is the cutest part of the flirtation between them, the most organic part, is the one that they ad libbed. <laughs> he like that just like just say that like George Lucas wrote everything else, but the yeah. one time where he's just like be cute and romantic and have like a little dialogue and like Pad like you know obviously like Hayden and Natalie like ad libbed, which by the way I low key believe that they were dating. The time, <laughs> <laughs> they. Like, that's the cutest one. Like, the whole pair scene, the, like, you know, aggressive education, when they were just being themselves, it is the most, like, natural and the one that actually sells it the most. And it's the one that they outlived and the one that George Lucas didn't write. And I think that speaks for itself. He should have let them all, just let just let them, yeah, go on their way. Yeah. Because I, and I, I do feel like he was very stressed making this movie. And writing writing this movie because the the last movie made like so many people upset, and I think one of the things that I had to keep in perspective rewatching this movie was that viral conversation with Freddie Prince Jr. where he talks about how 
the reason that so many people don't like the newer Star Wars movies is because the first Star Wars movies were made for kids, essentially. Mm -hmm. I Mm -hmm. feel like the first set of Star Wars movies were made for teenagers, fanboys, like George Lucas and his peeps. I think this second set was definitely targeted, especially the first one, was targeted at younger kids. Mm -hmm. And that's why we got Jar Jar Binks. That's why we had the young Anakin and I think by the time we got to the this racing movie, yeah. right like so when Freddie Prince Jr. said that these movies were for the next generation of kids it wasn't for us mm-hmm. and when I look at our generation Jackie we're like at the cusp because we were not in that set of of the second the the, the prequels yeah we were too young for the first trilogy and too old for the second trilogy right uh-huh. so that's why we get the last trilogy i don't but, even know if that's for me either i think that's for oh, another I, set of kids i love I the last too. trilogy and force I awakens love- one of my favorite comfort movies <laughs> what were yeah. you saying, that's, that's last jedi for me like <laughs> I, I have to rewatch it Oh my god, I can go off about the last. I think it's like a perfect Star Wars movie. Like, I think the dialogue for George Lucas, I think he has like the sci fi big story building mentality. It's just he doesn't know how to write dialogue. And I think the dialogue really hurts all the prequels. I, I think the fact that it's made for kids makes sense. I think the characters make sense. I even think like the little bad, like, you know, I know they didn't use like actual like effects. Like they did right. the original, like see, and like everyone hates that, but like I think it makes sense because at the time of two thousands, like those like visual effects were so prevalent that everyone used it. So like it makes sense. Even rewatching it, I'm like, you know what? It's so two thousands that like it, it's like this little time capsule that it worked right. for the time it came out. It's the dialogue. I I think yeah. the hardest part of the about this whole people like series is the dialogue. Yeah, and I also think that. He was trying to make a love story. The reason why the first three do does well is because they are at war, right? Yeah. And so mm-hmm. you see Leia and Han Solo develop their relationship. You even before we knew Luke was her brother, there was even that flirtation, but it was like small moments, bite-sized moments in between a lot of action, between mm-hmm. a lot of things happening. And I think this movie slowed down way too much. Because there wasn't the action part until we get to the end. Like oh, the the two yeah. of them are just having this romantic thing. Right. But it wasn't romantic at no, all. So they no. should have stuck to the formula that works, which is a little bit of light love in the afternoon in the midst <laughs> of fighting. And I think that would have worked better. I do- also didn't like that Ewan McGregor was away from Anakin and and in like Hayden was playing the the angsty teenager this is giving very much the what is it the fourth or fifth Harry Potter movie where yeah. the fifth movie where he's just yeah. like full angst. angry full email um but just the execution wasn't the greatest because again we're the dialogue that we're dealing with and you're right it is unbelievable that uh Padme even find this attract like what is it about him and so when i watched it with with my sister she had ne- she's never seen a star wars movie oh, and this never. is her introduction oh, and this is her introduction oh <laughs> serena and yeah. what really got us was the fact that there were many times that there were red flags ahead of, ahead of them actually consummating or being together that she should have walked away hundred mm-hmm. percent. Yeah. When he, he killed all the Tuscan Raiders. <laughs> when he just, came like, back wait, that he speech. Picnic, where he's just like casually bringing up fascism. <laughs> right. My sister laughed because when he was like, maybe that's what worked, dictatorship. And I was like, yeah, maybe that's it. That is what works. And my sister was like, not nah, no, Danielle. <laughs> No, my, 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 and like the thing is, like we've talked about this before too, with the whole like you know, Padme grooming and all that stuff. But, like Padme was just like, 
just smiling <laughs> like not saying anything like you mean dictatorship homie what like <laughs> can we stop let's not like you know tumble in the weeds of a fort like like of, yeah. like you know the meadows right now let's like talk about the fact that you just brought up dictatorship and i'm um, a senator right yeah. <laughs> He's like, the I don't trust senator. Yeah, but was the youngest senator. And my my thing with like George Lucas, it's like I need to understand what his like feelings are about women. Because how do you write Leia? How do you write Padme? How do you write like Ray Skywalker? And then have these men, these women fall in love with these type of yes. men. Because it's like, how do you write such strong, amazing female characters, but then have terrible taste in men? Like nothing <laughs> against Kylo Ren, because, but like what? Because, because like, that is what he. These men write themselves. There. right yeah if the patriarchy at, if you look at who george lucas is attracted to and who yeah. he has married and dated and whatever that's true he that's likes so true. strong women and uh, i'm not saying this is george lucas i don't know him but from what his character show me he may be one of those weaker men and this is the conversation that happens on the internet all the time where it's you have these men the andrew tate followers yes. of the world they don't go for the pick me women that they want go for them Padme <laughs> they go for the women that they want to be able to tear down break down and bring them to, down to their level and it's that, that quote that they want the like they want to cage that bird they yes. want the free spirit but they want to cage her and like i think that's what i hate about it like maybe not with Padme and anakin as much but like i hate that with leia and like Han a lot so i'm just like I why would leia go for Han Solo but now I but honestly I get it because it's like if it wasn't Hayden Christensen playing Anakin why would Ahmed like why would Padme go for Anakin it makes actually no sense the (laughs) thing is Han Solo was never trying to cage that bird he was trying to fuck that bird and go about his life (laughs) there's a difference I think he just fell in love with her. Yeah, it was an accident. It was. It, I'm serious. I re- he. If you watch his actions, there's nothing that man did that was him really trying. Like the woman said, "I love you," and he said, "I know." That oh, was all you, you needed to see. Red flag <laughs> on the field. <laughs> A Han Solo and, is nothing but red flags. You can make a dress with those red flags. Yeah, <laughs> and and that's fine. Han Solo is the hot guy you date before you marry a real decent dude. Yeah. You don't marry the Han Solo. Well, tell me on the Tala though, because she married him too. I don't even, like, I feel like, I feel like Anakin is a bigger red flag than Han oh, ever. Oh, yeah, no, no, he, and especially for Padme, who is like the youngest senator. Who is one of the ones that they like literally her whole people like voted so she could be at the senator for them another term and she was just like, No, I'm done. How did she I don't I don't it's a she it's okay, a, it's you just know a, what it was? It's just because he's hot. <laughs> it's he's hot, but also I think she has she has a strong empathy for him, but when his mother dies and just like being there, it was trauma bonding essentially yeah and he was in such a like shitty place and his motherfucker lost his arm yes let's get married let's do it because yeah. i'm in parliament or whatever with bugs and shit and married men so i'm gonna take this hottie that's true i feel like also the fact that he's a jedi also like helped. well like i i really do respect leia a little bit more for that reason because she did you know they did were separated i do think she like recognized that like Han was like because Han's also just the hot guy at that time, let's be honest. But like Leia was, was just like, no, this is not my worth. I can do so much more. And then she became the general and like she just did so much more in the sequels. But I think with Padme, also she died young. It was tragic, everything. The hiding of secrecy, the and you could tell that she like, you know, like like I said, this is going to revenge in the Sith territory, but like, you know, Anakin, you're breaking my heart. Like she just maybe she just believed in him. She saw him when he was a kid and saw, she saw how the sweet good. he was. Yeah. And, she saw know, this. She right. was an adorable guy. Like, looking at her like this. Look at, you know? <laughs> and she should have been seeing the signs. Yeah. But let's talk about the box office really quick because as much as we don't like this movie, we're not the only ones. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> The budget for this movie was $115 million. It made $653.8 million worldwide that's a lot of 
cash, wow. cash moolah. Yeah. Funny enough, this was the first Star Wars movie that was not the top grossing film of the year in North America. It placed actually third after Spider-Man and The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. It remained oh. the only one to not reach the number one spot until it was joined by Star Wars The Clone Wars in 2008, Solo, A Star Wars Story in 2018, and then Star Wars uh, The Rise of Skywalker in 2019. So this also was the most expensive Star Wars film until Star Wars Force Awakens in 2015, and that one had an estimated budget of $200 million. Lots of money, but it was a disappointment essentially in the box office but we do have to look at that time period it was very competitive (laughs) with that let's hear a word from our pod pals hello everyone my name is ben groves and my name is rob mcfarlane and together we are the every movie ever podcast we've always found refuge in movies we love them all from sci-fi horror to oscar winning drama it's so bad they're good B-movies. Each of us has had major mental struggles. I'm sober. I should be. Trauma. Mental breakdowns. And to make sure that we checked in with our best mate at least once a week, we started the Every Movie Ever podcast. Join us as we survey the worst movies in the world and the cinematic gems that you may have missed. So, whether you're a fan of Batman or Billboards, Godzilla or God Level Writing, we've got episodes done and hundreds to come. Nick Frost says we can't do Every Movie Ever, but we'll show him some fried f- gold find us on spotify or apple podcasts or anywhere else click the link in our bio to find us consume and we're back and we're going to talk about cast and crew maria you want to tell us a little bit about who was in the running with your beloved hayden christensen for the role of Andy? i'm actually like yeah finding this out was actually really shocking to me we have i didn't feel like misha collins paul walker Paul hangs Christian Bale, Heath Ledger, James Vanderbeek, who is Dawson's Creek, and then Joshua <laughs> Jackson with him. <laughs> what? I would have died if Joshua Jackson was Anakin Skywalker. Christian Olsen, <laughs> Eric Bond, that, which was like from like Brink, Brink? Like Disney Channel. <laughs> <laughs> like, My dude. Thing, Chris Klein, Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio, which I'm very shocked that he did not get it, to be honest with you. Jonathan Brandis, all audition. Even at that time, I, yes huh. even at the time because when he did romeo and juliet he was like 21 oh i guess that was a lot earlier and that was than 96 yeah oh. so he was too he was too old yeah. but eric von denton mm. i can't and that greasy hair <laughs> that, oh, <laughs> jackie can't get no, over that that boy had a chokehold on his disney girl <laughs> he say. did but he was no anakin skywalker but he like, he ledger brian Phillippe, these were like christian bale these are they were all weird. too old but they had and this is no knock on Hayden because I do think he in not in this role but in other roles he he acts well but I feel like he has more of a dramatic character niche where like I felt like if Anakin had a little bit of swagger a little bit of like Heath Ledger and 10 things I hate about you like and it would have elevated the character so much more and then Padme had a reason yeah so I so this is my thing about like Hayden because I will admit that I don't think because I I do love the guy but anyways (laughs) he auditioned and like this is like one of my favorite things that Hayden always does like he always talks about him getting the role he was like like in it with his roommate he was like 20 years old this is just like a fun fact about him because I know fun facts about him. <laughs> but he got the role and then like him and his roommate had like a like a lightsaber fight as soon as he found out that he was Anakin Skywalker, which is like the cutest thing ever. I low-key think that Hayden is just like a giant nerd. And I yeah. think that's why it worked for him. But I think Hayden plays villains very well. And I think the problem with his casting is that everyone always says like, oh, he's really hot. Let's make him like rom com, the love interest. I think every time he's a douchebag, bad guy, he plays it better. Like, yeah. the, like except for like maybe Christian Bale. Do I see? And I guess Heath Ledger now because of Joker. Mm-hmm. Do I see a lot of villains in this list? And I think Hayden does better as a villain yeah. or emo villain, and that's why he plays Darth Vader well. Misha that's me Collins personally. was so unknown by that. I, I honestly, I don't think he would have done a bad job. He was unknown, True. but he was cute enough. 
Yeah, Misha Collins at that time was like not known at all. I don't think I knew him at that time. Yeah. No, I definitely didn't. But Jonathan Brandis, that breaks my heart. Like, that doesn't even make sense because, like, what year did he pass away? Yeah, that's true. This was this was he, very early. This was for Attack of the Clones. Might, so like, he died in November of 2003. Oh, okay. But wow. when did they shoot this? Because there's so much CGI. They had to have shot it, like, two or three years prior to it coming out. And it only came out two years after Phantom Menace. So I think they probably shot them back to back. And then George Lucas just sat and edited for quite a bit of time. I, I don't I don't know, but it took him a long time to write this film. Because Phantom Menace, like I was saying, was not received well, it made him really slow to writing this. He didn't finish the rough draft of the script until three months before shooting began. That is insane. Like, mm. and you know that they didn't get those scripts very easily, mm-hmm. but to wait that long before rehearsals and stuff, that that's a lot. And after doing a couple drafts, he realized that he needed help. So he brought in Jonathan Hales to help him with the third and final draft. And it's, you know, obviously he got a credit for the screenplay on that. It was unexpected because he hadn't had a screenplay credit since 1981, which was like on one of the Indian Jones movies. So Carrie Fisher, it does list Attack of the Clones as one of her ghostwriting. I I, then then the only thing I could say is God knows what garbage pile it was before she was able to make this part happen then because I I just can't see it. Yeah, because like they gave her enough, like they gave like having (laughs) Like the scene that gets me is the sand scene, and I know we're like it's just I know it's like a joke because like he's literally just talking about sand after she's like literally dressed in her best outfit ever, backless, like with gorgeous fit, and she's just like she's just staring at him. That's it. She's just staring at him, and I'm like, Carrie, could you have given her something? Like it's yeah. just just because he's hot and he's a Jedi. If 100%. they had a sex scene. I think I would have believed all of this. If he just uh, swang the dick real quick one time, it was, it was, I would have said she was honest. digitized. It's a kid's He's movie, a, Danielle. All right. Yeah, it's a kid's movie. <laughs> the fact that Attack of Clones <laughs> is actually one of the most confusing movies because let's not forget that I don't understand what Obi-Wan is doing the whole time. <laughs> He's just wandering around the galaxy <laughs> looking for stuff. <laughs> Like, I okay the <laughs> scene in which Obi-Wan goes and finds out that there's this planet and it's not in the Jedi archives he goes to they the took, wise... they took 20 minutes to talk about that by the way right <laughs> yeah he goes to the wisest person the wisest person said you know what let these younglings tell you what to do <laughs> so he says kids uh, if there's a planet and it's not in the archive. What'd that mean? One of the young men says, well, that means somebody took it out of the archives. <laughs> Hello! Why you needed to come and make a fool of yourself with that shit? I was like, you wasted <laughs> your time, the young men's time, Yoda's time, and my fucking time with this bullshit. <laughs> it's a testament to the fact that this movie's made for kids. Yes. Like, that's what I knew. We like, this is for movie it. for kids. Like, the fact that the kids are answering the question. <laughs> that, like, they're it not, it's a literal librarian at one like, point. It felt like Blue's Clues Adora, like, where should we look for the planet? It was removed from the archives. <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, I love that Ewan McGregor is like such a good sport about these movies, but Loki probably just like I hate my life. <laughs> <laughs> He's also a cheater. Maybe that's the theme yeah. of the movie. Oh. So I knew Kira Knightley played one of the doppelgangers for Padme in, in this the movie first too? movie. In the first yeah. movie, yeah. But when I was watching, I said, "Hey, that's Rose Byrne," I and my sister, <laughs> same thing. <laughs> my sister was like. Who? What are you talking about? I got so excited. I have like six pictures in my phone right now of me watching the movie and just take trying to fight and get her like, you're doing great, sweetie. I was so excited for her. 
<laughs> she has long lines. She's like, "Are you okay, Senator?" And I'm like, "Go, you go, girl. I love this you for you." Go, Glen Coco. <laughs> <laughs> I literally, she literally was like, "Is that, is that Rose Byrne?" And then she, I immediately, I am to be. And she literally just stands there and just does yes. nothing. <laughs> and I'm like, "I love this for you. Like, go off, do nothing, just be pretty. <laughs> Good for you." I had no idea that was like one of her first films that she was in. That I was like, "Well, it's not one of her first because I think she did some th- some other things before." Before but, she was like bigger. Yeah. Rose Byrne is one of the most underrated actresses, and the woman can do everything. She's she a should. Comedian. She's she a should, comedian. Like she should be in so like she should yeah. be winning Oscars because she can do drama. She can do comedy. She can do TV. She could do movie. Like literally a chameleon. She's such a great actress. So underrated. I bet she knows the tea about Hayden and Natalie dating on this movie. Oh, set. they definitely did. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? They, they, they had so much chemistry. They definitely did. <laughs> he always um, like smiles so sweetly whenever he talks about Natalie too. Just saying. Well, I think it's crazy. I had no idea that it under hush hush that members of NSYNC had been giving a cameo appear- appearance because of George Lucas's daughter and they shot the cameo, but he then decided to cut them out of the movie. They could be seen briefly in a crowd shot. I actually think that's better. Like one of the things about Star Wars is that you're very much in the world, no matter how big the celebrity, like you have celebrities in it, but it's never one of those like, you know, it would have taken like us my- out of the movie tiny head from a kid in king arthur's court daniel craig yeah played a stormtrooper in one of the newer ones oh Oh. i didn't realize yeah he plays one of the stormtroopers that um brings or no uh the one that uh ray does the jedi mind trick on to get out of her restraints that's daniel craig as a stormtrooper oh didn't know that it just reminds me of like ed sheeran being in the last season of game of thrones (laughs) <laughs> you like why okay and he sings and it's like that's not sure it just it just takes you out like i just mm-hmm. don't think you should do it unless it's one of, like a spice world situation mm-hmm. where you're just gonna have cameos on top of cameos but not in one of these fantasy movies where it will take you out of it so mm-hmm. and like you said maria this is the first mo- star wars film in which yoda is actually yeah. entirely computer generated and yeah. we get that fight sequence because in the previous movies with the puppets they weren't able to get the yoda puppet to hold on to a lightsaber that's why we never saw a lightsaber fight with him previously yeah. which is which makes sense. but i also really do love the ewan mcgregor well obi with kenobi fight sequence at that time because like, it's so iconic I will, I, I will say this about the prequels. The fight sequences are great. That's why I'm telling you they should have stayed in their bag. That's what they're good at. That's what they know how to do. Yeah. It's beautiful sequences, great action fights, and not good, dialogue. Right. The dialogue, we don't need it. I'm and not we, asking exactly, for that. We don't need it. Like we're we never asked for it. Like even with Hayden and like I, I think with you and too, like they really committed to the fight sequences. And I think that's what they shined at. And like we see that with Ewan a lot. Like he does fight sequences great. And then like as Hayden grows up, he does fight sequences great. Even Nally, whenever she was in her action bag, she did great. So like mm-hmm. they should have just like leaned into it more. I know that they had to kind of set up the love sequence, but like the whole like uh, you like Obi-Wan's like side quest with like the younglings and like I would I, the most confusing clone war droid plot line ever. Like we didn't need it. He could have no. just fought people. We would have been happy. Like he didn't see yeah. like the he didn't third movie. They could have just mentioned that Obi-Wan went to this planet and figured out they were right. flown in both Django Fett. Like that's yeah. all we needed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to explain Boba Fett to my sister and I said, like, you know what? Don't worry about it. He's a little so... boy in this movie. Don't worry about it. Just and like it just didn't even come up again, unfortunately. Like fully, yeah. you know, properly until his like show does you know yeah well mm-hmm. i asked ken about because i'm like okay so we see the little matrix baby clones 
but Boba Fett is already like a a child. I'm like, so is he like first gen clone? Like, what's going on with the Boba Fett situation? He and Kevin's like, no. Jango Fett said in payment for him them using his DNA for all the clones, he wanted a son, which was a true clone, no sped up growth process or anything. And so that is Boba Fett. Yeah. So. And also they with the clones, they were kind of dampering any kind of aggression or anything yeah. like that. So mm-hmm. with this clone full aggression, hence why we get Boba Fett yeah. <laughs> in mm-hmm. his true glory in the movies what do you think people's obsession with the character of boba fett is like he i mean obviously he has a presence in the 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 first in the first movie first three movies but like people really loved that character so much that i i think it's robot chicken (laughs) (laughs) i'm boba the (laughs) like i think it's just the like spooks of him yeah (laughs) I think it's the jetpack. Who doesn't yeah. want a jetpack? Yeah. That's very valid. I, I think it's just, I, you know what it is? I think the OG trilogy set it up that you could be anyone mm-hmm. and like everyone just ran with it. And like yeah. that's why they ran with Boba Fett and the jetpack. It was so funny <laughs> because what I thought about when I saw this next fun fact was can't hardly wait. Can't hardly wait. <laughs> so. <laughs> Christopher Lee had originally been offered the role of Grand Moff Tarkin in Star Wars, but he turned it down. His friend Peter Cushing got the role, but Lee came to regret this decision, and he did not let up the opportunity pass him by when he got his second chance, and so he agreed to play Count Dooku. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool, but Grand Moff Tarkin, besides the Star Wars film, why is that... What is that? It both in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> and it was because of the scene. I can't hardly wait. <laughs> oh, love that movie. Okay. So the movie starts with an assassination attempt on Senator Padme. Those wormy things. I was like, are they going in her ears? Because I am not down with that. They're huge. <laughs> They were huge and they knew things like they knew that R2 was looking around that like they hid. Like yeah. they were very smart wormy things and I was not about it. <laughs> Wait, before we get to things, can we talk about like how awkward Obi-Wan felt whenever Hayden was just like, you feel more beautiful. I know we won't just stand and go like pulling his thumb. Like I don't back for Obi-Wan in this movie so much. <laughs> I think I made a subplot in my head <laughs> about this movie and then when i rewatched it i was like well where are these parts in my <laughs> subplot i thought this was a love triangle uh, well you don't probably hear this i hear this all the time yeah fair probably because of the luke leia han from the first movie so i, I think, think your brain subconsciously no, i think, I think it's the third movie, movie. Yeah. I think it's when he starts losing his shit and he's like, you guys are plotting against me. You want to be with each other. Like he starts, well, I feel like he starts projecting shit. I don't it's know. It's also at the end, whenever Obi-Wan says like, I care about her too. I can't actually remember the words, but he says something where he like gets where Anakin's coming from. I think it's just because it's Ewan McGregor. Like it's yeah. just because he's like standing there and he's Ewan McGregor. And it's very clear that like the thing I get like, it, Hayden's a very much a teenager in this, so it's very hard to see him as a love interest. But like, because Ewan McGregor is right there, yeah, it's very fair for everyone to be like, why would Padme go for him when Ewan McGregor is right there? But Ewan McGregor was like, well, Obi Wan wasn't paying any attention to her in that way no. whatsoever. No. But I think th- the storyline would have been more interesting had they made it some sort of love yeah. triangle, unfor- uh, like forbidden love situation especially after she gets pregnant and he is like going ape shit this is where the women's crazy. touch needed they needed yeah. the yeah. women's touch in this moment for sure 100 percent. and uh, the I... amount of times anakin yells he's like a father to me <laughs> and, and like we get it anakin 100 percent. we get it you have daddy he issues emo. he's such daddy issues <laughs> I cannot, I cannot, I cannot defend him in this movie. It's so hard to defend him in this movie. <laughs> so, yeah, the wormy thing, but then 
because Ewan, Ewan, Obi-Wan and Anakin are protecting her, they like see that there is an an assassination attempt. So Anakin balls out immediately, jumps, finds a speeder, is just jumping out of windows, chasing people. We get to see a little of his speeder skills from the first movie. And Obi-Wan's just like, please don't kill me. (laughs) I thought like one of the things my sister said is when they ran into when they ran into the room Anakin jumps on her bed right yeah that bitch don't move she does not get up until something else happens I think they like kill the worm or what or something he like tapers the the worm right and that's when she's like hello what's going on (laughs) bitch you didn't feel that man jump on your bed what kind of mattress is this no, but I think it's like they're talking so loudly outside of her bed. Yeah. Right. How did she hear it? They're literally outside your room yelling. You and don't she hear had that, it? She had that blue milk before bed and she just she passed did. out. Yeah, no, she she can sleep through everything. I would not I've been listening in. I've been listening the whole time and hearing Anakin's dreams about his mom. Like, <laughs> I don't know, you've been with your mother, tell me more. <laughs> right. She could hear when he's having a nightmare, but didn't hear all that loud talking. She must have just had a bad day. I d I don't know. And when they get into the speedsters and then they start whatever, I was confused. I was like, what's happening? I thought it was a worm. <laughs> so they were chasing after the person that put the worm in the room or sent the droid that put the worm in the room because i like, was so confused <laughs> because like anakin like took it upon himself to like find the guy that was like trying to assassinate when they weren't even supposed to do it so like that was excessive that was like yes. too much for sure like yeah, but I think it's like Obi Wan really jumps out the window and just like it's like all this droid, like eighteen thousand feet in the air. And it it reminds, was holding this... up for dear life. It ahead, remind Jamie. me of the Fifth Element. This yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and then they they finally catch up with the I don't even what remember what they call her Changeling. Um, Yes, she was a changeling, but she was also yeah. hired by a bounty hunter, they find out. Yes. Because she tries yeah. to shoot Obi-Wan, but he knows he knows she's coming. And so he he shoots first. And as she lays dying, they're trying to get information from her. And as she's about to like reveal all the information, she's shot with a dart. And they vaguely see a a Mandalorian like run out of the room. And Obi-Wan takes the dart and goes to his friend's diner for him to identify because none of the archives can identify what this dart is. From. That's just a random thing for him to do as a diner. Yeah. Like, yeah. He yeah. Got, he got friends in low places. Obi-Wan. <laughs> he goes in, and he goes to the younglings. I'm like, you know. Yes. Right. First of all, I need, I need alerts. I need a virus protector for these Jedi archives because yeah. there's a lot gone missing. What is it, McAvee? Y'all need yes. McAvee. <laughs> like, where's the cookies here? Like, yes. just, what do you mean they just deleted it? Like, what right. The- but only a Jedi can delete it. Dun, dun, but it's dun. so 2000. It's so 2000. Like, this is the <laughs> late 2000s technology. You're trying to be like advanced space network. Like, well, but I love that he's just like, but my friend told me that there's a planet here. <laughs> and and Yoda's like, bitch, if you don't go fly there and see if you see the planet and get the fuck out of my face. Like, I'm you teaching see these the, Right. You see the gravity is pulling there. You are telling me all the goddamn context clues. It's like, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Okay. She has the Parthenon. <laughs> where does it live? Right. Go find I really cannot believe he like, like he interrupted their lesson as like a young yes. child's lesson to talk to him about this. <laughs> Can't you see I'm busy? Like, what? 
It's like every rom com ever where the like boyfriend runs into the teacher's room and has yeah. like a fifteen minute conversation with her. And the children have to explain to him, like, oh no, when you love someone, you just like go to the airport and fight for them. <laughs> right. When you love a planet, when you need to find a planet, you just go to the coordinates yeah. and then you look for it. <laughs> I, I just like, feel like well, you didn't need to do all that. Obi-Wan. I don't know much about space. <laughs> but we I know, know nothing. We know we nothing. Know nothing about but we could have we could have found this planet though. <laughs> but it, I know if there are things orbiting something, there has to be some sort of gravitational force in the middle even if it d- isn't showing up in the archives like that much i know it's right. like that's like that's fourth grade like, you know <laughs> physics right there i've been to the planetarium they told me that yeah we oh, all man. we know that i don't know i'm terrible at physics but i at least know that there's a gravitational pull yes <laughs> and that means that something is there exactly like i don't need to be a space wizard <laughs> And oh, so a- <laughs> after they find out the 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 stitch at the diner, they go to the club. I mean the bar, I believe. <laughs> the the okay, I understand what the point of the whole club scene is because it's supposed to be like it's very much to the like the OG trilogy whatever they had the club. But that that club scene is ridiculous. It's the most embarrassing club scene I've ever <laughs> They're seen. They're selling drugs movie. in a Star Wars movie. Was it death sticks? Death well, sticks. Cigarettes. Yeah. Death. Which is so funny because Hayden is like a big fan of cigarettes. <laughs> to hide his halitosis. Yeah. It's probably you contributing know, to the halitosis. You know what? Let yeah. me apologize. I'm sorry because halitosis is a real thing. You can't control it. And I yeah. apologize for any of our listeners <laughs> who are experiencing. It has this. to do with Zanker's diverticulum to say. There you go. Sorry, ex med student can't help it. <laughs> so I apologize. Yeah. I'm just no, not yeah. should make fun of him. Sorry. And I only bring it up because like every phantom person is like, oh, he smokes death sticks. I'm like, no, he smokes cigarettes. So let's not be that lame. Like, <laughs> so yeah, Obi Wan yeah. goes uh, off on his journey journey to find Camino, and finds out that there's a secret clone army commissioned by. Some guy, Sifo Dias, who got killed in the who, who got was pop, the Jedi that was killed, yeah, in the first the, movie. This was, the pet- this was such a complicated way to explain this. Yes, yeah, yeah. I so, was, I was but lost. Obi Wan just kind of wander around with the tall, skinny people from Lilo and Stitch. <laughs> <laughs> it is. They are <laughs> from <laughs> Lilo and Stitch people. <laughs> Grand oh, Councilwoman no. is apparently from Camino. <laughs> no, they got that from Lilo and Stitch. You're 100% right. <laughs> oh, man. And so he's just wandering around and he's like, oh, that that bounty hunter looks suspicious. And so there is much fighting with Jango Fett as Obi-Wan just wanders around this very rainy planet. I like their fight scene. It's, it's you know, very hand-to-hand kind of thing, not just with the lightsabers. It was a little rough and tough, which is mm-hmm. on par with yeah. a fit. <laughs> with a fit. Obi-Wan fighting is great. Yeah. Like, when in doubt, have Obi-Wan fight. Yeah. <laughs> you could say first. I, I like also like, I don't really understand this scene. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't get it. I don't understand what the Lilo Stitch lady is there for. I don't really understand the purpose, <laughs> but I like the fight scene. Yeah. yeah. That's literally it. Yeah. And then meanwhile, on Naboo, Obi-Wan oh, yeah. has told I, Anakin, yeah. you need to watch Padme. Mm-hmm. She needs to leave the Senate for now. And so, this was another part that had to be explained to me. I'm like, okay, so she just put Jar Jar in charge. Like, why is Jar Jar there? And Ken's like, well, each planet has like their little council and there's a spokesperson. So Padme was the spokesperson as the senator. But when she left, Jar Jar was also in that council. And so he became the representative. And the so- way he got played so yeah. easily. The, so um, that rolls mm-hmm. into the other fan theory that Jar okay. Jar is a Sith Ooh, and was yes, in I on it the whole one. time. And then there's this, also this idea that like 
Palpatine always wanted Anakin to be the bodyguard of like Padme so that they would have that relationship. So like I feel like I think with Attack of Clones, there's just so much lore and fan theory that yeah. makes the movie make more sense than the actual events make sense. Yes. And right? I do I do feel like that fan theory is more less convoluted than all the other ones where yeah. because he does you already see in the movie that he sets it up because Anakin has not had his own assignment yet and I think that has a lot to do with with Obi-Wan still thinking he needed more time but also I think in the back of his head hearing what his mentor taught was saying that there is confusion about whether Anakin is going to be a the chosen one the yeah deliverer of good or evil or like you know, they're still and, can't put your finger on it, even and from I Yoda. Think, I want to point out that Padme called it in the beginning, like in the first five minutes of this movie. Padme is like, Tom Duco, why aren't we checking up on him? Yeah, right. and like, let's listen to you, Senator. They're like, let's ignore you and find like, you know, Anakin Skywalker, who's been obsessed with you for 10 years, and make him your like, you know, bodyguard and like, you know, make the Beyonce soundtrack very relevant right now. But just say. <laughs> Like, literally, Padme calls it. Like, I just feel like it's so there. But everyone just ignores, like, the obvious signs of, like... But I think it's a good analogy to what happened. Like, the Jedis became... I don't want to say complacent, but they... They they had a lot of blind spots. Yeah, I thought they had it unlocked. Right, and... and this is why I'm not a t- fan of Jedi's because I feel like the Jedi's got too political and that became made them complacent because of like, oh, we're going to be like even with Anakin being like, we should find the people who are threatening Padme right. versus like Obi-Wan being like, no, we're just supposed to protect her. Like he's like, but we're aren't we supposed to be the ones that's supposed to stop the threat from happening? Like, I think the Jedi lost their way too. And that uh, this is getting into like the whole Star Wars theory of like, I think actually Anakin does bring balance because he goes back to the original ideas of what the Jedi and the Sith are supposed to be. But that's all. I, it's kind of similar time. to the Avatar. How involved yeah. does the Avatar get in these situations? What mm-hmm. is the role of av- the Avatar? True. And can the role of the Avatar evolve over time? Because things change. The way that the old, they were so set in the old ways. And, and it's funny yeah. because as wise as Yoda is, I think it's almost like for me, Yoda looks like he sees all this shit. Like he knows everything that's going to happen, but he knows it has to happen for that balance to happen. So it's like, because you look at Yoda Mm -hmm. and you're like, he's too damn smart to not see all this shit happening. Like, why is he kind of letting it happen? Do Do you think he knew what was going to happen? I think he can infer like i think he's been around enough i think he started to see some of the signs and i think he could infer that yeah this is probably what's going to happen but you know what i i don't think my role is to do anything which is which is truly the jedi way when you think about it so it makes sense and like i actually like when i was doing this rewatch i saw that too i'm like i think yoda does know that this is inevitable because he is the one that was just like well your your padawan should watch Padme and Obi Wan, you should some and like they never separate Padawan and Master. They did in the scene, so like I started to see that with Obi, like with Yoda as well. Sure. Yeah, I think they all had a part to play in this. Mm-hmm. Um, because also then the fact that Yoda even gets the clones in the first place later down the line, mm-hmm. I always found that to be real suspicious. And that's Yoda doesn't confusing. get the clones; he gets the he, he gets, gets the, the doesn't he's he bring the, the stormtroopers of... on the yeah but well, those aren't clones. Are clones well no technically at this time they are are they yeah technically are at they... this time they are the same thing okay that's why it's confusing because well, why are they like, babies this... in the other place they, there's they're babies so there's children and then they were full adults in that okay. place they're like oh, okay. accelerated clones at that moment so like so this is why the, this is why this movie is so confusing because you're like <laughs> those are stormtroopers but they call them clones and the, they're not the bad guys. The droids are at the time. Correct. So, it's just, it's so back to Anakin and Padme at Naboo. <laughs> so I like how like the Jedi aren't supposed to have relationships. They're not supposed to fall in love and get married. And Anakin's like, no, I think like 
I can't even remember what word he is. Like, it's the attachments. Uh, it's yes. very avatar, which is, it's very avatar. Yes. But mm-hmm. he was like arguing that the passion and the commitment are actually like in line with the Jedi teachings. And that's what true love is. I understand why they kind of would want, because like the thing is, it's almost like you have to dedicate yourself and the force and being a Jedi is the number one thing. When you have family, you're like, nah, I got to go deal with my family. Just like where he has that moment where Padme falls off of the ship into the sand and he's like, fuck my mission. I'm going to go. Mm-hmm. My lady yeah. just fell. So I could see it try- them trying to avoid being torn but it's also just unrealistic and i think we almost so so like so this jedi decree is very close to like thickism as a religion which they also believe in not having attachments even islam doesn't talk about like having attachments like you have your family but you have to accept the fact that when you go to the afterlife like you will not have these attachments which Mm -hmm. i feel like all like major religions can like relate to that like whenever you you die alone you're you, you're born alone you die alone mentality mm-hmm. and i feel like that's where the jedi mentality comes from and that's why we see these themes overlap with things like the avatar as well and like you know being able to channel that but like i think they misunderstand like it's kind of like anakin saying that like no like me feeling that love is why i should help people i think it's just, i think it's a selfish need and i think we mm-hmm. see this more in like book three with like revenge of the sith where like he is ready to like essentially we see this in him with his mother and how he like commits revenge with like the sand people like where you know we should question Padme just be like oh okay you killed a bunch of people right <laughs> we should be they're not famous. really people it's fine, it's fine. Yeah. yeah but like it, it, this is where it gets like kind of questionable of like okay you can you should you can form attachments in the sense of love but not revenge essentially so like I think that's what they're trying to say like I, I do understand where the Jedi are coming from but at the same time it's just like I think they're trying to show that like Anakin does not have healthy attachments, unfortunately, because he doesn't yes. know how to have healthy relationships. Yeah. Mm. Now, while Anakin and Padme are are thirsting on each other, Obi-Wan then has to go to Genesis and he's investigating the Separatist plot and is captured by the Insectoid Genosians. Those are the wing guys. And that's when we find out they're making the droid army. Right. And for the oh, separatists right. and yeah. Doku, we Doku. This is what we mean, Count Doku, right? Yeah, Doku, yes. Count Doku, Doku. We hear him plotting that he's been the one behind trying to hurt Padme or kill her. We learn that he's doing it for someone else, like some deal. Yes, and so Obi Wan sends out a distress signal. Yeah, right. when the rain. Yeah. <laughs> And Anakin and Padme follow his trail to Genosis. Genesis, I don't know. Right. Um, because the Jedi can't council tell them, do not go. Didn't they tell him, tell them not to go yeah. help and, Obi-Wan? And, and this is also when Anakin goes back to his Tatooine, right? Like, yes. yes. He does this like solo mission in between all this. It's like, Obi-Wan's like, wait, why aren't they in Naboo? And they're right. like, surprise, we're actually looking for Anakin's mom. And Anakin meets his stepbrother. And we see Joel, what's his name? Uncle Owen. Yeah, we see yeah, Uncle we Owen. Yeah, we see Joel Edger- Edgerton, like yeah. young Joel Edgerton, who comes <laughs> back in like Obi-Wan and, you know, con- like reoccurring role in Star Wars. <laughs> so- Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru. And then we yeah. meet his stepdad, who's mm-hmm. like the Tusken Raiders took Shmi right she's been gone for a month and so anakin goes to look for her finds her and then she's just like anakin hi and then dies the (laughs) way like for this being a kids movie the way in which he found her like she's like tied up almost like a cross situation Mm -hmm. and you could tell like her back is all fucked up like they've been slashing her yeah it's just very unsettling yeah and then he she she tries to say I love you and she dies and then he goes ape shit and he murders everybody. Murder. And when he comes back and like we said, he tells Padme. She's like, I rolled up into it. that bitch real quick. I saw my mama dead and I shot up the bitch and I killed children 
and mothers. And she was like, word, word. I'm going to stand beside him. I'm going to stand beside him. That's my (laughs) Treated them like the animals they were. Yeah. My sister said, wait a minute. She has babies with this man? I said, yes. She does. My my thing is like, up until now, like he is trying to be kissed. He like professes his love. Like I am haunted by the kiss that you gave me. She's like, we can't do this. And then she hears him. Talk about how he killed everyone. <laughs> and she's like, I'm gonna stand beside him. I'm like, <laughs> stand beside him 10 minutes ago. What do you mean now? Like, yes, you should, you should yeah, be it, calling for his arrest. Like, you, she didn't even have to follow him here. She chose to yes, be there. With him. Right. He said he was he was actually Padme is a part of his destruction because yeah. she likes said, the messy. She likes the messy. I'm telling you, she's she bored. Does. She's bored with the center life. She the curly haired guy. That like he was too safe. She wants Anne again. Yeah, I get it, girl. Did you get it? So, <laughs> don't blame her. Uh, and this is when Anakin also starts to unravel. He's like m- manifested this grudge in his head against Obi Wan, and thinks mm-hmm. Obi Wan's holding him back. But, and he's jealous, jealous of him. and everything. Yeah, yeah, and like he just starts to get real in his head about things real quick. And then at the same time, back at the Senate. They're staging this coup where they want to nominate a chancellor, aka dictator, right in the Senate. Palpatine. And they're like, yeah, and, and they're like, who who should we we need a senator to nominate us? Oh, Jar Jar, come here real quick. We got a job for you. <laughs> well, the thing that they do is they're like, Oh man, I wish a senator Adala was here because yeah. she's the only one who would be would be strong enough to <laughs> to nominate such a <laughs> radical idea man if only padme was here yeah like i think that i shall do it you know like <laughs> <laughs> You're, like the fan theory holds up like it really does make it sense it really does yeah he's like oh i got you <laughs> yeah so now palpatine is the chancellor and is in charge of all of the decisions the chancellor thing, which I thought was really interesting, was that when the Senate votes to give Supreme Chancellor sweeping emergency powers to go to war against the Separatist force, this is the same ploy that's going to say Adam, <laughs> ploy that Hitler <laughs> used to gain the same dictate or similar dictator <laughs> dictatorship power in the mid 1930s Germany. I didn't know that actually. It's really interesting. So I, the reason I find that interesting is the fact is interesting itself, but it's because all the fanboys always talk about how woke the newer Star Wars movies are, and I'm like, Star Wars has always been woke. There's always been politics. This is a political drama yes. for God's sake. Exactly. It's always been this way. Like it's always been about fascism in space. What? Like, oh. yeah. So now we get this weird arena battle. They Obi Wan has to nerfle the Garthok, and then there's this weird praying mantis thing that also is attacking them. And oh, Amidala just randomly has a key because I didn't see where she got the key from. It was just she's in her like belt. it's like a pin yeah, or she, something. Okay. Yeah, and she like, like, she, like she like just like climbs the pole like an effortless lift. Also, yeah. fun fact: Anakin. I'm sorry. Anakin <laughs> has a connection to animals. <laughs> they don't talk about this in the movie, but like he can talk to animals, and that's why he's able to like control that rhino thingy that he ends up oh, controlling. No. I just thought he used the force. But, yeah, yeah. No, but he he's so special Anakin Skywalker teeth. has special train like special skills. That's why he yeah. is Anakin Skywalker, and one of them is that he has a connection to animals, and that's why they kind of they kind of show it in the movie, but like, not really. Because like, like remember that more being a parcel tongue? That was just gonna. Yeah, say. no, he's basically parcel tongue. <laughs> yeah, but like parcel tongue, where the animals are your more than snakes. But like that's <laughs> when that picnic scene happened, where like he was like playing with that other armadillo. <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah. How'd you so, feel like, about that, Danielle? He didn't roll up and look all <laughs> yeah like scaly looking, so I was fine with it. <laughs> And we get the I've got a bad feeling about this line said by Anakin as they're like chained to the post mm-hmm. to be sacrificed to these giant animals. But then not the Jedi the show that, up. Yeah, not to mention the fact that like it, it's like Padme's just like, oh, I love you for this. Yeah. By the way, we, we, we dubs. <laughs> so random. And then yeah. all the Jedi show up and Yoda has the stormtroopers. 
and then they have the robots and then it's <laughs> confusing for a moment like you know you're on the side of the people with the glowing light sticks like right. that's all you know in this scene yeah and, and then <laughs> it's like then dooku turns on the the jedis and then you're like oh he was behind it the whole time yeah in this scene it's revealed that samuel L. jackson's character has that purple lightsaber uh-huh and i find it very interesting that the way he he was like i want to identify myself in this scene because there's so much going on so he says to george lucas hey can I get a pipe, a purple lightsaber? And George Lucas is like, well, nah, it's blue or green, my bruh. And oh. he was like, yeah, but I want a purple one. Okay. <laughs> and- I always wondered how he got purple. Okay. So like, he just asked just for it. it. Yeah. He just asked for it. Because and- no one else has it. Like, it's literally a, like a Mace Windu thing, which is so cool. <laughs> and but, so like- George Lucas is like, I'll think about it. And so- yeah. Samuel Jackson didn't know if it was going to happen or not until he saw the movie. So I thought that was really cool. Got it. <laughs> it's really cool, actually. So Ken also said that George Lucas finally like gave in because he was afraid to tell Samuel L. Jackson no. <laughs> As he should. As he should. Like, how do you get Samuel L. Jackson for your movies and not? Let him have a purple lightsaber. Right? You just and let him do what he can do. Let him be. <laughs> and a lightsaber that's engraved with bad motherfucker. Yeah. On it. Like, come on. Bad fun. That's what <laughs> dreams are made out of. <laughs> really, truly. <laughs> so this is the first battle of the Clone Wars. Everyone is taken aside. Then there's the newly revealed clone army to fight against the Separatist forces. And then that kind of becomes the galaxy-wide conflict. Actually, the Separatists become the rebels, and then the Republic becomes the Empire. And we get an epic fight scene with Yoda. And I just want to call him Dookie, but that's not his name. (laughs) Count Dooku. Yes. It's so close. It's so close. It is. And also, like, Anakin loses his hand, which is really cute to, like, how Luke loses his hand. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> My sister <laughs> really was panicking when he got his hand arm stuck in that machine with the droids. She oh, got yeah. cuz yeah. that was foreshadowing that his arm yeah. was going to get cut off. I was like, "Not yet." Mm-hmm. But the way that he got knocked the fuck out and his arm was gone. Yeah. You you know what else they foreshadowed a lot? Him losing his lightsaber. They did that yes. a lot in this yeah. movie and I just like I get that, like, he's supposed to lose the lightsaber as when he becomes, like, you know, Darth Vader. But, like, I don't know. They did a, they, they, there's some weird foreshadowing in this yeah. movie. It is a little too on the nose about yeah. it. But the funny thing is, originally in this fight sequence with Yoda and Count Dooku, they were... <laughs> I had to... I, I, now it's stuck in my head. Yoda was actually supposed to come in and immediately have the fight with him. But the creative team felt that was going to be too quick of a transition for Yoda. So, and the audience felt like they needed to feel the power of good and evil going against each other. So George Lucas added in the preamble to the fight, which is like them throwing the the blue lightning and the rocks Um, falling and all that other stuff. And it's also really hilarious because (laughs) Christopher Lee when he was shooting the scene, because this is green screen and there, you know, there's not the Yoda puppet, they actually made like this fake puppet or this fake Yoda with Fang as kind of like what we can assume is a joke because of one of his first earlier roles. Count Dracula, the horror of the night from 1958. Yes, <laughs> which I really wish I could find a picture of that because that seems like it would be hilarious. Yeah. So, and like that's like something with Hayden too that he like loved shooting it, but he just didn't like the green screen thing. Which, like, if you, I will say that with the sequels is that everything, or like at least with like the newest shows with Disney and stuff, that like, everything is special effects or like they have basically built a Star Wars world mm-hmm. in the studios. So, like, even you and McGregor and Obi, like, and Hayden, when they came back, they're like, it's so cool that we're like literally in Star Wars now whenever we were doing it with the prequel, everything was green screen. So like they hated it then, but they made it work. But like as adults, 
like or you know 20 years later doing it now they're like wow this is so different and honestly i couldn't imagine like can i like imagine trying to act and everything was green screen in these movies no wonder they had such a hard time (laughs) Yeah, I think that's one of the complaints a lot of the Marvel cast has yeah. about mm-hmm. some of those movies. Yeah. And it, and speaking of Hayden, that's why he really liked when they filmed that set at the bar or the club, as I called yeah. it, because it was an actual <laughs> set yeah. instead of it just being the green screen. Yeah. We also get um, Mace Wind- Windu decapitates Jango Fett which Boba oh, Fett and Boba Fett watches, yeah. yeah. And that's what leads to everything, yep. yep. Yeah. And then Yoda proclaims the shroud of the dark side has fallen and be- begun the Clone War hat. I'm like, so did you know you were just waiting? That's what I'm telling <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, it, yeah, I think he knew the whole time. It My just boy. feels like it this whole time. Yeah, yeah he knew what was going to happen. Percent think that and he then- knew. The last scene of the movie is, oh, by the way, Anakin and Padme get married. Yeah. It's, it's just like, it makes no sense. You, that That's why I said a sex scene had to be in, should have been in this movie. Because it would explain why she's obsessed. If she had sex right before he went and killed all the sand people, she, still, she would have been digmatized. And then she finds out she's pregnant and so they have to get married. That is is the only thing that would have made sense for me at this point. Stigmatized. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> it's a children's movie, so they couldn't do it. But I would assume, yeah. I'm assuming, I think I'm assuming stuff went down. There's no way she's wearing a backless dress and nothing went down, just saying. Right. Her yeah. outfits, like, let's just, okay, okay, A, she eats in her outfits in this, <laughs> yeah. like, yes. movie. Maybe like, he everything. eats as well, and that's why <laughs> she loved him. Mm. It's the only thing. And there's no way nothing happened. They're like on this little <laughs> cute vacation together. She's wear- dressing to the nines. <laughs> okay, here's my yeah. synopsis of this movie. Tell us. Yeah. <laughs> Obi-Wan gets sent on a rogue job from hell. <laughs> while Anakin and Padme go on vacation. <laughs> they go from seaside to sand dune in a matter of 24 hours and then it's marriage all the way baby in between fights some people kills, die switching Close. sides bugs <laughs> coliseum riding bugs killing bugs flying bugs and did i mention vacation turns to marriage yeah that's yeah. no there's a reason why disney sells it as like I made mean, Anakin fall in love because that's literally what was only happening. That was it. <laughs> the only thing that made sense about this movie was the fact that they have terrible dialogue and they somehow still fell in yes. love. <laughs> well, oh. that is Attack of the Clones. The terrible movie. We did Apo- it. <laughs> Apologies, Ken, if you made it this far. We we did as best as we could. This shit oh, don't make I, no sense. I very much was like this episode is going to be rough because I don't understand anything that's going on. And I, I feel like, like we discussed in, in our last star Wars episode, I have like a master's in star Wars. It's not like I'm uneducated about star. This one just makes no sense. No, like Phantom Menace, it, it truly doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Phantom Menace. Like it was a mess, but it made sense. Like, this one, mm, I'm 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 glad I I I followed my intuition and did not go to see this movie when it came out. Look, oh. nobody has any expectations of me at all. So <laughs> <laughs> I like the first three. I love Han Solo. I do like Star Wars. I'm not remembering any names of planets, people, or places whatsoever. But I couldn't even I couldn't even get on board with this shit. Like it's a ship that I'm not shipping. The villain hasn't fully blossomed yet, so that I can't excuse his behavior. <laughs> and there wasn't enough hot dudes in it for me. Yeah, that's and, fair. And I feel like after I watched this movie, I had to just move my underwear to the side because there was sand coming out. That's how much fucking sand <laughs> is in this movie. This. 
this movie it's like truly one of those things where i'm just like why am i still watching star wars like it just <laughs> it, it makes you question like why you do this i was wrong about the cameo kaminoans mm-hmm. being the grand councilwoman from lilo and stitch george lucas actually said that this is an uh, homage to his friend steven spielberg and his work on close encounters of the third kind no it's lilo and stitch (laughs) (laughs) so boba fett is 10 years old in this film so it implies that his time of birth or creation was during the events of star wars episode one due to the animosity aimed towards jar jar binks in the phantom menace the working title of this movie was called Jar Jar's Big Adventure. <laughs> it was a big adventure. It was. <laughs> it was a big uh, council meeting and everything. <laughs> apparently, George Lucas's original idea for the Clone Wars was for everyone in the galaxy to be fighting their own clones. Mm-hmm. George, I, I need that. you to take a nap. I think, <laughs> I think, I think it's time to wrap it up. All right. Maria, why don't you tell everybody where to find you on social so that they can check out your videos, follow along, get to know you more. Yes. So you can find me as Maria Watches Everything on TikTok and Instagram. I did a whole like playlist about Star Wars. I definitely talked about the type of clones <laughs> when I first watched and how confused I was when I watched it. <laughs> so if you want to see that old playlist, but like, and then like me rewatching all, like old watching the new Star Wars and getting it now. Please follow me on TikTok and on my new content about Avatar the Last Airbender and compares to the Jedi as well. So yeah. And check us out at No More Late Fees on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, and Threads. And let's get into our present day ratings for this sand dune. <laughs> All right, Maria, we're gonna start with you. Same day principles. <laughs> <laughs> If I had to watch it for a reason, like a podcast episode, it'd be a same day rental. And then I'd be like, I'm done with it. I'm showing a 2.5, like a 1.5 speed. (laughs) Danielle, how about you? I'm going to go with that. I'm returning it the same day. Same day rental for me. Yeah. Same. Jackie. It it took me three separate tries to get through this movie. And I finished literally 15 minutes before we started recording because I was just like, I'm confused and I can't and I I don't even want to take note like it was just not stellar but I do love Star Wars so there's that well if you have an opinion on Attack of the Clones hit us up at our quick drop 909-601-6653 twat us at the twitters hit us at the threads and you can be featured on a future episode and I actually have a voice memo from my sister from the other day I went back and listened to a few No More Late Feed podcasts that I missed last summer. And so I was listening to the Armageddon one and I was cracking up when they were asking, talking to you about the end of the movie and how you reacted to it. Because I have such a vivid memory of all of us sitting in the living room watching the movie. And the second it got emotional and intense, you shot up in your seat and walked out the room. Like no words exchanged, nothing. You were just like, I'm not here for this. I'm out. (laughs) It was so good. Oh, well, thank boy. you. I love that. <laughs> Thanks for re- listening feeling. with us. <laughs> I I was very like I didn't like movies that made me sad or made me cry. So when I saw the direction Armageddon was going, I was like, and I'm out. It's gonna end here <laughs> for me. Thanks. Goodbye. This is it's for your mental health. This is for yes. your health. Yeah. <laughs> and mom's the word next week. Our highly anticipated the first wise club episode with our moms is coming at you. We don't know what's gonna happen. You know, lots of technical we, difficulties are gonna happen. Lots of tangents. Lots of opinions. I think lots of like this. <laughs> just half a face in the camera (laughs) it's gonna be interesting oh my gosh it's gonna be funny you should just like record that for an hour (laughs) we're getting in early we're hitting record immediately yeah we're just gonna have 
a ton of Patreon content <laughs> that's just our parents working technology. Yeah, so th- that that's the episode right there. Yeah. <laughs> well, Maria, again, thank you for joining us. Can't yes, wait to have <laughs> more fun with you the next time you're here and in our bonus episode. Yay. Just always the best to have on. Yeah. I have so much fun. Thank you guys. I, I know this movie was terrible. If I have to talk about this movie, I'm glad we talked together about this movie. Yes. Yeah. They can't all be winners. And no. sometimes it's just as much fun to talk we about. Had, we had good success. we had a good run with the other two. We did. But it was time we had to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, may the force be with you. Be kind and rewind.